What is corruption? You might say it's when politicians take money on the side. You're not completely wrong. Corruption does involve some stealing, but it's more about using your position in government for personal gain rather than serving the public interest. Any modern government is a complex mechanism. When it's well-oiled and working for the people, the nation's power and overall quality of life goes up. But no mechanism is perfect. Even in the most developed countries, it won't take long to find poorly written laws that make the lives of regular law-abiding citizens difficult. That is a perfect environment for corruption type one, unsystematic but common. Let's call it occasional corruption. In these cases, politicians can sometimes bend, avoid, or simply ignore formal rules for personal gain. Like when someone needs a passport extra fast, or your enlistment officer forgets to ask for your university enrollment letter to keep you from being drafted, or your doctor signs your sick leave papers that conveniently include a couple extra dates. You get the idea. Of course, such occasional corruption can bring harm. In countries where it's widespread, there's a much lower development rate. Still, it's just a symptom, not the disease itself. If a nation cannot provide quick and reliable services to its citizens, corrupt, low-ranking officials start to charge for them under the table. This corruption is kind of like a lubricant for this rusty and inefficient mechanism. It doesn't do its job well, obviously, but without it, the whole system would fall apart. Jailing a few corrupt people won't change anything. You have to fix the mechanism itself by improving state institutions so that services are cheap and transparent. No one's going to pay a bribe when the very same service is available officially. However, there's also another type of corruption, a much more dangerous one, systemic corruption. It's when officials don't just avoid fixing the mechanism, they purposely break it and rebuild it in a way that serves their own interests. The harm caused by this systemic corruption is more than just what the officials pocket for themselves. There's also the collateral damage. By enriching themselves, corrupt politicians destroy entire projects and infrastructure. In any healthy system, managers try to minimize costs and provide the best services for the lowest price. Systemic corruption is the total opposite. The higher the budget, the bigger the bribe. That doesn't leave much to pay contractors for quality products. This is perfect. The quicker everything breaks, the sooner the politician can get a new budget to fix all the problems. And now he can take a new bribe. Administering social security doesn't give you many chances to collect bribes. That's why construction contracts for roads, curbs, etc., is where the money's at. Under such a system, even discussing corruption can be dangerous. Some people did have the opportunity to tell Putin what they thought about high-level corruption to his face. You know, in 2003. The response was a court date and more than 10 years in prison. A lot has changed in Russia since 2003. What looked like massive corruption 17 years ago now looks like innocent fun. In modern Russia, corruption isn't for getting around the law, it is the law. Healthcare institutions fake their statistics to show how efficient they are at providing services. School teachers supervised by their principals fake presidential election results. The police protect criminals over citizens. Lawmakers introduce new laws that make corruption even easier. Courts print out pre-approved sentences, while state media distracts society with some flashy new agenda. Fortunately, it can't last for long. You can replace anything with an imitation, but the real economy will just wither and die. When successful enterprises get taken over by incompetent people that just happen to be close to those in power, when entrepreneurs have to leave the country or risk getting imprisoned, and foreign investors look elsewhere, no propaganda can convince the people they're living better today than they did yesterday. By the way, one of the government's favorite tricks is blaming the people. Like, after all, haven't you bribed a police officer to avoid a fine and save some time? Or, haven't you paid the doctor to get better treatment? How about an urgent document? And that daycare for your kid? Well, you should blame yourself. No one made you do it. Well, the thing is, it was this very government that created a nation where you can't do anything without a bribe. And it's the government that should be held responsible. Spread the news, share this video. Goodbye and see you later.